you join me on an incredibly wet and windy day here in Portsmouth but we're going to brighten up your life with this it's a bearing B76 this is a one-off commission for the owner it's a fabulous steel construction yacht and this was built for the owner for him and his wife to travel the world handle it themselves don't need a crew they do have a crew at the moment but they don't need one and uh, yeah that is the concept of it really is basically to do that so we're going to take you on board and we'll give you a full tour we're going to head inside first of all where it's not raining quite so hard look at this <laughs> so we'll step on here head up and we'll head in where it's a bit drier and i'll stop and clean the lens <laughs> just in case bear with there we go so this is the main deck now this has been deliberately set up as i say for owner operation which is why they kept it completely open plan all the way through the original design for this boat had the galley closed off for crew operation but because it's not going to have a crew it is completely open plan there's storage all the way along here i won't open it all but just to give you an idea this is this kind of stuff looks like some technical things in there fixed tv on this one saloon areas back here this is all again owner personal choice in terms of those color schemes they deliberately kept it really light and bright and airy and we can wander through here just the full length of this galley of course is here two ovens i think i'm right in saying one of them is a steam oven we've got refrigeration here but there's actually a huge amount more of that which i will show you because it is designed for ocean traveling um hob obviously we've got dishwasher in here as you can see this boat is very much in use there and is actually living on board so <laughs> hence there's stuff everywhere i won't open everything but you get the idea and then over here we've got um, glasses storage that sort of stuff i mean if you know about bearing you'll know that these are designed for serious usage and that's exactly what this boat is all about um, dining area here as you can see there's a side access door here as well so you can go straight out from here and onto the side deck and onto the bow but also of course it means with that open you can get a lot of air flow through here we <laughs> struggle to say that i say air flow through but so no air flow through here and um wine cooler is over here but yeah that's a big open deck and they've done it by putting the helm up on the upper deck which i will show you but we're going to head down first of all have a loop around i like they put bits of dark accent in places like this just to sort of add a little bit of contrast another whole door here you can see how substantial these are but let's head on down and i'll show you what the lower deck accommodation looks like now these are normally a four cabin layout but again owner specification this is a three cabin and the reason for that will become very obvious as we go on through so let's come into here vip cabin is up here there we go we'll turn the main lights on really nice size they deliberately brought the bed up because two reasons first of all they're really maxing out on storage and that gives more space under the bed for a huge amount of storage but also they wanted to make this bed a really big bed so rather than a normal queen size this is a king size and the way to do that if you imagine the hull as a v well clearly the further up the v you come the wider it gets so that enabled this to be a really full-on proper big double bed we've got usual kind of stuff so hanging locker in there and some shelving we've got av equipment here with the um with a sound bar bits of storage about the place and if we come over here this one is more hanging space and more shelving and then this cabin has its own ensuite that's in here everything on this boat is a really good size there's no sense of compromise anywhere they really have maxed out the volume in here it's excellent sinking behind there storage underneath the loo and the separate shower very good that's nice <laughs> if i open in the right place we'll be have a look at it there we go a little illuminated shelving in there 
Fantastic. Okay, let's come back out from here, back down the passageway. This looks very much to me like a watertight door. <laughs> it's proper serious stuff, isn't it? Look at this, the way this closes off and these come out into here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what that is, watertight door. So it gives you a collision bulkhead at the front. Obviously, you don't lock it when there's people in there. That's just when you're out at sea. So this is the interesting thing because the original layout for this boat had this as a guest cabin. It had bunk beds in it. It had an ensuite at that end. This owner wants to be able to head off out to sea and this boat has tremendous range. We'll talk about that when we look at the engines. So you can go out and you can stay out because you can only stay out if you've got the range. Yes, it has. And if you've got the food. And yes, it has because it's got massive refrigeration, freezers, just a whole ton of space so that they can do exactly that. They can set sail on this and just stay out for weeks at a time. It's absolutely fantastic. It really is living the dream. We've done an owner interview on this one and he talks us through what his plans are. <laughs> it is spectacular. If it's not on the channel already, it's coming really soon. Definitely look out for that. We come around here then. So um, this is cabin three. So I say it is a three cabin layout. Again, see if we can flip the lights on. There we go. Look at that. That's a really nice cabin. Big square cabin, big wide bed. Very, very comfortable. Hanging locker in behind here. And access into some of the plumbing and wiring, which it looks like <laughs> it's currently having a little bit of warranty work. It looks like that's why that's uncovered. Like so. And then this one has ensuite access into the day heads. That's this one here. So we have the shower, we have the sink, we have the loo, but we also have the door there that takes you straight out into the passageway. We'll see the other side of that in just a moment. Very, very nice indeed. OK, and if we head on back. Laundry facilities are here, so this is an actual proper separate laundry room. <laughs> Which you don't normally find on a 76 foot yacht. And then this is the owner's cabin. Full beam of the boat, absolutely palatial. This is really good. And again, with that light wood, it just feels light and modern and crisp. But they've put some nice detailing in, like this fluting sections behind the bed. And I love the lighting in here as well. Just looks fantastic. Now there's a massive walk-in wardrobe. Again, this is all back to the concept of having a liveable boat, the sort of thing that you can just take off for a week or a month or a year or a decade. And so consequently, plenty of space for all your clobber. Drawers next to the bed, of course, there's a dressing table over on this side, big hole windows, we've got the blinds down at the moment, but that's what's there. Fantastic. AV equipment, obs. And a nice little place to tuck yourself away over here. Ah, you can see these hull windows better now on this side. There you go. So that is the view out of a very wet and windy Portsmouth at the moment. We'll see that better from upstairs. There we go. En suite, that's in here. Beautifully lit. Look at this shelving. Just fantastic. And areas like the fluting up here just adds a bit of interest, just makes the whole thing Stops it being plain, makes it feel like a luxury boat, but without getting heavy and dark. And the mirror wave yet, so there's one of those few mirror waving fans. And we have got the shower in there, which I suspect has a light somewhere. But <laughs> not that one. That one. There we go. Very good size. Rainfall shower. There we are. Lovely, isn't it? Let's loop right back on around. Nice, nice, nice. Let's press on a bit further. Let's just stop and take that in for a moment. Let's just turn those lights back off and leave it as I found it. There we go. That is beautiful. OK, let's press on a bit further. So that's the lower deck. We're now going to go up and take a look at the upper deck. There we 
go. Let's loop right on around. Goddamn YouTubers everywhere, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Playing hide and seek on a bearing. Absolutely. I think you're winning. <laughs> Up we go. And this then is the Sky Lounge. And again, with a bit of luck, I might be able to find a light switch. Hey, here we go. Yes, we're in. Now, the original design for this yacht had a captain's cabin up here. So this would have been closed off. There would have been a bed in there. There would have been a heads in the corner. This owner, again, no need for that. No captain. It's owner operated. So they had this done as this sky lounge. Now, what's worth mentioning is that all the plumbing, so for that uh, cabin toilet that would be in that corner, and also for that guest cabin we saw that's been turned into a pantry, all the plumbing, all the wiring to use it as a guest cabin or to turn it back is in situ. So all you need to do is add the, the sort of the, the woodwork, if you like, the bulkheads and so forth, and you could put that back if you wanted to. What they've also done with this is they've made this into a, or well, it is a bed settee. So if you do want to use this for extra sleeping, then you can do. And the other thing we have up here is the bridge. Now what they've done with this is you've got a retracting section here that comes down so that you can link these areas. But of course, what it means is that with that up and this door closed, you can have the wheelhouse in darkness and this all lit up. And of course, for a boat with the kind of range and capabilities that this has got, that is a very useful feature. Wheelhouse is here. And it's interesting to see on the little plaque here that this is a design category A. So that is ocean. That's the highest rating basically of the CE categories. So this really is a proper serious offshore machine, as you'd expect, of course. Operating system is here for the whole ship. So we could go into, come out of the way, so I'm not reflecting quite so much. Engine instrumentation is on here. We could look at tanks on here. There we go. We can look at bilges, see what's operating there. There we go. So all this kind of stuff is all controlled from here. Chillers, so I guess that's air conditioning. Yeah, there we go. Fantastic. Usual kind of stuff across here. So you've got autopilot and thrusters and so on engine controls there's no helm seat and there's only a little tiny wheel and the reason for that is because this kind of boat I and mean, it cruises at eight to ten knots you don't sit and drive it like a car you get it out get it on course get it on autopilot and it pretty much drives itself so all you need to do is be moving around here keeping a watching brief you can lean against this you really don't steer them at all even in the harbor it tends to be mostly on the engines and the thrusters We've got navigation screens, as you can see in the center. You can configure these again how you wish. This one is the closed circuit TV system. So you can monitor all around the boat. You can look out of the back. You can look down the side. So that boat there, for example, is on that side of us. You can even look out the front, so the camera mounted. Uh, in fact, you can see it. That's that little fellow there. Uh, even into the engine room, you can see that. We're gonna have a look at that in a moment. And then, Build from control panel, exterior and front light control panel, navigation light control panel, that's all here. It's all proper serious little ship stuff, isn't it? It's very, very nice indeed. And then this area here, which just gives somewhere for people to come into joining in, watching what's going on, that is a great place to be and to do that from. Also, if you were running with a crew, of course, it makes a nice little mess area. I love all this dark everywhere because, of course, this needs to be non-reflective. It's a proper serious place of business. Look at these big wipers across here. Brilliant. OK, let's press on back a little bit further. This area we mostly looked at, there is a TV that rises up out of this panel here. And this is then also for things like glasses and bottles and that kind of thing can go in there. Thusly little sink at the end and there's blinds of course for all these windows that is a nice comfortable area isn't it if we come out the back now I didn't bring my shoes with me so <laughs> but nonetheless we can see everything we need to see there's a dry area as we come out of here anyway um, because of the overhang so there's seating here nice and sheltered by the 
upper deck so you can sit there when the boat's underway and you are sheltered from the wind and the weather. Little seats around the place, some beds. You can carry your tender up here, so that's why there's a crane there. So if you're just doing sort of local short journeys, you might want to put it on the bathing platform. It does have a high-low platform. <laughs> Listen to that wind. It is quite literally gale force today. Um, but if you're doing long trips, you might choose to lift the tender up. You can bring it in here, put it on chocks. That's why it's got these stainless steel plates on the floor. You move the sun beds out of the way. And that's where that would go. There's also um, bimini poles that will go in here. That's what those chaps across the back are, I think. And they go into these silver little discs in the corners and allow you to shade that area. So if it's somewhere really hot, you can have some shade there. That is the access down to the uh, cockpit. We're not going to go that way. For obvious reasons, it's keeping the rain out. And life raft on the outside on both sides. So there we go, that is the interior. We'll have to go and brave the outside bits now, won't we? I want to show you the crew cabin and the engine room as well. So we'll head on down the way we came. Normally we would have gone out and down, but as I say, without any shoes. <laughs> Didn't seem like a good option. That is a nice area though, isn't it? Look at that, absolutely beautiful. A lot of space for a sub 80 foot yacht. Okay, we'll come all the way out. <laughs> Hello. No, no problem at all, don't worry. There's a bit of filming and videoing and all sorts going on here today. Okay, we've got a bar area just here, which is the barbecue and the hot plate and so forth, hob. Um, Fridge is down underneath that one. Sink is under there. And then I think we'll dash down to the crew cabins next. Have a look at those. You've got dining area out here as well. So the three seats across here, this is all covered up, of course, but this is seating across here. That's part of the camera system again. So you'll see those dotted around the boat. And then there's lighting around here. And the steps that we saw from the upper deck that came down the back, well, that is these fellows here. So we were up there on the other side of that glass hatch originally. I think it's actually probably very thick perspex, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Okay, let's come back down here. This is the high-low platform. You can see the chocks for the tender here, and this is the access into the crew cabin. And that opens, I think, like that. Yeah, there we go. So there's two things in here. The crew cabin itself, of course. Now, as I mentioned, this isn't an area that's going to get an awful lot of use. There is a crew on the boat currently but the plan is to run without crew. So uh, just a single bed in here. We've got some of the uh, Victron systems here. So um, inverters and so forth, battery charger, that kind of stuff is there. A bit of storage down here as well. And then on the other side, more of the battery management systems and an ensuite for the crew is in here. There might be a light somewhere. There is a light. <laughs> Can't see a light switch. Hang on. No, that's not it. I don't know, but not to worry, we can see it. So um, yeah, it's basically a wet room. You've got the toilet there. There's um, that area on the floor for training, and then the shower is up there. So pretty compact, but it is fairly typical of what you would find on a 76 foot yacht. And it's easy to forget that that is, of course, what we're on here. Swimming pool style ladder, so you can drop that in for obviously getting in out of the water. And then this big door here, which is currently open, takes us into the engine room. Now this is unusual because what's missing from this engine room is engines. And of course they're not really, they're actually under the floor. What they do with this boat is they have skegs under the hull and the engines are sunk right down into the skegs. And it keeps the center of gravity really low. You can access them by undoing a few screws and they're directly underneath these panels. So one here, and one here, but it means that normally it's going to be used as a storage area. It means people can come in here without a lot of machinery flailing around and belts and that kind of thing. But yeah, that's where they are. There's also a dive compressor in here somewhere, apparently. Generators are here, twin generators. So they're up there. And then the engines themselves, they are a pair of Cummins QSL 9s. They're 404 horsepower each and they're continuously rated. So you can run them. I think that means you can run them flat out permanently if you want to. You obviously wouldn't choose to, but you could because they're designed for sort of serious commercial operation. At flat out speeds, it's about 11.5 knots. 
but if you drop it back to eight knots, you are using around 40 to 50 litres an hour for both engines, so very, very economical, and she holds 24,000 litres of fuel. So that means that you're looking at a range of 6,000 miles. And that's what I mean. You add that range to that pantry area with all that food, and it means that you can go out, go somewhere, and really, really go somewhere. You don't need to be calling in for food, calling in for fuel. You can just carry on carrying on. Fuel polishing system is over there, so you can even maintain your own fuel on the run. This is a ladder that takes you straight up to the cockpit, so that's another way out of here or another way in. If you want to come in here without going down onto the bathing platform, obviously if you're out in heavy seas, that's potentially a good thing. And then again, you can see the camera system. There's a little chappy up there. There we go. That's that. Let's come back out of here. Last thing to look at then is a quick wander around the decks. There we go. So we'll head back up here. This is the wet bit. Oh, what a day. We've got the overhangs here. I often talk about these super yacht overhangs and I'm quite grateful for them today because you can see the water's coming down on the outside of them. So we can scurry up a little way without getting too wet. That's part of the camera system again. And you'll also see the door here is one of the doors that comes out from the main deck area. There's one on each side so you can get a lot of access and a lot of ventilation through there. Let's come right up to the bow so we can say we've seen everything. And what you've got here, seating area around a table, a couple of stools, and these, I think I'm right in saying, are bimini poles that go into these sockets here so you can shade this area and then steps up to these anchor windlasses, ship's bell. And we will, for completion, come right up here and have a look from here. So that is the main deck. That's the bridge where we were earlier. If we look down that side, it's pretty much the same as on the other side. We just walked up. You can walk back down to the cockpit that way. Massive searchlight up on the top. Navigation kit is up there, so radars, that sort of thing. And yeah, that is about the size of that. So that is the Bering B76, an absolutely incredible, serious offshore yacht. Um, massive thanks to the owner, Michael. He's on board and he's given me a tour. And he's actually on a pretty serious trip at the moment. And as I say, if you look at the meet the owner that I've done with him, you will see exactly what his plans are for this yacht. Bogdan from Bering is here as well, so thanks to Bogdan for being very well represented. And I am going to get out of this rain, but not before saying thank you to you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments, and we'll catch you on another one of these real soon, hopefully on a drier day. Take care. Bye-bye.